Here in the second part of our pricing strategies, we're going to look at the long-term strategies adopted by the marketing department when it comes to setting a price. Now, when I say long-term, that means that you're not going to be changing the price too frequently with your product. You're going to stick to a plan, stick to a strategy, and whatever the strategy is, you're just going to change it only when the requirement arises. So with that, let's look at some of them. The first of those is what you call demand-based pricing. Okay. Of course, you understand that demand comes from consumers and in this instance, the business will set the price of its product based on what the consumer demand is. And I'll give you a little example to explain this. Think about petrol or gas. What happens is whenever in the world production of, let's say businesses are increasing their production, more cars are being uh, driven on the road. When those things are happening, usually that's a sign of, you know, the world growing as a whole and the worldwide GDP increasing in a way of speaking. Now, when the demand for production is going up, obviously in order to produce things, in order to drive cars, you need petrol. So when the demand for petrol goes up, that's where the oil producing companies feel that this is their opportunity to make some money. Now, what's crucial to understand here that petrol or gas is pretty much a need. Okay, Without this, you can't go around, businesses can't produce, can't deliver, so they need the gas or the petrol. So that's what we call an inelastic demand. Okay, Even if the price goes up, you won't reduce your consumption so much because you still need to go around do your thing. So demand-based is then the business is basing your, their own pricing based on what the consumers want. If the demand's high, that's fine, it'll increase the prices because that's where they have a chance to make more money. If the demand's low, they will try to reduce the price so that it brings the customers back to their product. Okay, so just remember that it has to be something that is of need for this to work. Secondly, a very common practice is called competition-based pricing. And we saw Mike from our last videos that he was competing with other kids in his tree on his street selling lemonade. And of course, if you're more expensive than them, people won't come to you. If you are too cheap, people might uh, question your quality. So price competition-based pricing is the practice where the price is based upon the price of your competitors. So if they're at 10 cents, it's safe to be on 10 cents. If they're on 5 cents, let's go down to 5 cents. So you try to match what the other business is trying to do. Now, this can play out in a couple of situations. Some markets have one big market leader and the other small business, so they're simply trying to follow what that leader is doing. And in other situations, there are a lot of big businesses that cover the majority of the market share, what we know in economics as oligopoly for those economic students. So few businesses controlling most of the market and they try to maintain the same prices so that they're not competing with one another, starting a price war. An example would be Uber and Kareem. Whenever they're operating, they try to make sure that they're not fighting against one another and not getting into price wars. There is one more scenario in which the competition-based pricing plays out, and I just want to finish on that on this topic, and that is something that we know as destroyer pricing. And destroyer pricing is, is when you see another business doing well and you try to note their price, and you reduce your own price much, much more below than what the other business is selling at. So basically you're trying to undercut the other product by selling it cheaper than they are. Now in certain situations, some businesses will be happy to sell their product what it costs them to make it. So in that sense, they're not looking to make a profit. If it costs them $10 to make it, they will be happy selling it for $10 because it brings the customers to them and takes the customers away from the other competitor. So that is also called destroyer pricing, another way competition-based pricing works. Third of these long-term pricing strategies is called cost-based pricing. And we know cost is the expenses that are incurred in producing a product. Now again, let's try to get Mike a solution in how to price his glass of lemonade. And let's say this is his glass of lemonade. Now we understand that in making this lemonade, he had to put in a few things, spend on a few things so that he could produce this glass of lemonade. What are those things? Clearly he needs a straw, so that's part of it. That would have cost him some money. He would have needed lemons, of course, and in that situation, obviously, they would have, he would have paid for it, so it cost him. Maybe he got a little bit of help. 
a friend help him out and maybe he had to pay him a little cut from his profit and that's also costing <coughs> so in order to produce something it will cost you to make it okay and let's say it cost him mm, let's say three dollars okay glass of lemonade he feels that it cost him in total to make three dollars now in order to make a profit he has to make sure that he sells it for more than three dollars but the question is by how much too high and people won't buy it too low and you may not be able to even cover your own costs so in that sense in that situation mike will give himself a target profit he will tell himself that i want to make x amount of profit on each glass of lemonade i sell and let's assume that he wants to make at least 50 percent profit on all his lemonades right now 50 percent is the number that you're going to apply to the cost of production of this lemonade so it cost me three dollars i'm going to add 50% of the cost of producing lemonade as my target profit which becomes obviously 50% of 3 is 1.5 dollars by doing this by adding these up i can calculate my final price of the product that if mike decides to sell his lemonade for a price of 4 and a half dollars that way he'll be able to cover the 3 dollars that he went spent on making the lemonade and he will also be making a guaranteed a dollar and a half by selling it at a price of four and a half so cost based pricing is the best way to make sure you're covering your costs and you're also giving yourself a little bit of breathing room for your own profit or any other fixed cost or other expenses that might have come up things like rent etc that's what cost based pricing is all about Next up is what we know as psychological pricing. And this is where the marketing people are trying to play with the minds of the consumer. Your eyes see it, your mind believes it, but it's not really true what's really happening. That's really what they want you to feel at that time. And what psychological pricing is, and we've all seen it everywhere, 9.99, 19.99. Whenever you don't have to pay the entire amount in one banknote so let's say if it was hundred dollars it was 99.90 you feel that you're gonna get something back in return it's just 10 cents at the end of it but you feel that you're getting some you earn you're winning a little bit of this battle and that's what the marketing people want you to think so something that was for two dollars they might say 199 and that's all they would change about it and people like wow it sounds like a good deal let's go get it so that's what companies are banking on to get people's, to people to think that the price is just right. It's what suits us, thinking psychological warfare. And just on that topic, came across something that <laughs> further helps us to identify and remember this topic, of course, the great Michael Scott from The Office. And he explains this perfectly. How companies think we view prices for $20, eh. But for $19.99, wow, that's just what I want. That's basically what psychological pricing is all about. For that, expression on your face and a little bit of spending from your wallet. Now, the last of our long-term pricing strategies is what we know as price discrimination. And as you know, the word discrimination means treating people differently. And here, when we talk about price discrimination, what we mean is that different people different consumers will be charged different prices for the same product let me explain that to an example let's look at a train for example we all know that trains have many classes economy business uh, everyday travelers things cargo so on and so forth similar to airplanes i guess so there are many different classes and they price differently for different people and let's understand some of that through three Typical types of commuters, three types of people who might get on a train. First of all, let's look at our little guy here. Clearly, he's dressed up to go to work, something that he would be doing every day. So I can say that taking the train is a need for him. He needs to get to work. 
it's the fastest way to do it. So there is no way that he can avoid taking a train. And maybe that's where you can charge this guy slightly higher price. Yeah, he has no choice. It's inelastic. Therefore, let's make money from it. Or you could charge him something completely different. For example, if you know this guy is going to take the train five days a week, every day, morning and evening, you can give him a little package deal, which will be an example of reducing the price. So businesses can choose to price them differently depending on the type of consumer there is, what their need is. And of course, from their need, we understand that it is inelastic for him. So a very important factor in determining a price under price discrimination is the elasticity. If it's inelastic, charge high. If it's elastic, then you have to think differently. And let's understand that part through this guy here. Let's say this is you guys, a student. Okay? Student trying to get to his college or university and taking the train there. Now students don't have a lot of money, right? You guys aren't earning yet. There isn't a lot to pay. So you're looking for a deal. Any way that you can get to class on time and still get there cheaply is what you're trying to do. So you're open to ideas. You could take a bus, you could take a train, you could carpool with someone. So there are many options. So for him, I could say that this is kind of elastic. Choose to take it, not choose to take it. He is bound by the money. So maybe in order to attract him to the trains, you need to reduce the prices. Because if it's expensive, the student is not taking it. And if he doesn't take it, the train leaves the station, the seat goes empty. Any empty seat is costing the business. They didn't fill it up. They could have potentially earned from it, but they didn't. So maybe reducing the price to get the students to take those free seats is one way to go. Let's look at this group of happy tourists. Okay, They've come here. Uh, I'll come to a new country looking to explore and what they're looking for is convenience and something that also fits all of them together. So maybe this is where you need to give them a package. Kids travel free or anyone under 12 uh, travels free, things like that. They could take the bus, they could take the train, but because you are providing them that option when you do when you produce them, when you provide them a package, excuse me, that means you're not charging them the entire price on all the tickets, a reduction of price. Right? Let's say another, com another group of consumer, somebody who's looking for luxurious travel. Okay, You will set up the first class cabins for them, nicely, I guess, uh, decorated, leather seats, um, foot massagers perhaps. All those things will attract those particular people, that target audience. And once they come to the train, you know that for that extra service, you can also charge them a higher price. At the end of it, the bottom line is, it's still the same train. It's still going from one station to another. That's not changing. It's the same product. But the way it's being delivered and the way it's been priced differs from the type of customer that you have. Think about, let me give you another example. Think about a stadium, right? You go to watch a match and there are different price tickets. There's the economy and then there's the middle class and there's the, the upper class and then there's the boxes and then there's this enclosure, that enclosure, because they understand that people have different affordability, different elasticities. So in order to attract them, you will have to charge them different prices because if the match starts and finishes and the seats went empty, that means you, were, you had an opportunity to make money, but you lost it. So it's better to sell it for cheaper rather than keeping them all the same price. And as long as you keep that, press, that practice, charging different prices to different customers based on their elasticities, you're practicing what we call price discrimination.